Welcome everyone. Welcome to the uh, Media Studies major um, webinar and welcome to the University of Alberta. Uh, my name is Nicola Di Nicola. I'm the undergraduate advisor for the Media Studies program, uh, which is in um, the department or unit, we're not actually a department, unit of uh, Media and Technology Studies. So we're going to answer any questions uh, you have today about the program and we've got some wonderful instructors in the program and I will have them introduce our themselves just now starting with Jamie Barron who's the area coordinator for media studies. Take it away. Jamie. Hi everybody. Um, I'm Professor Barron. Um, I am yes the coordinator for the media studies program. Um, I am also a professor in film studies so my area of expertise is in, in film history and theory, um, but, but also in media studies as well. Um, I will be teaching the Media Studies 100 course this fall, and then um, Brian, Professor Foto, will be teaching it in the winter. Um, so both of the introductory professors are here, um, so we can answer any questions. No, there's Mike Litwack as well. He's going to be teaching a 200 level course. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I I can answer questions about myself later, but if there's anything about that, but, um, but I guess we'll talk about the, the courses and everything as we go. Does that sound good, Nicola? Should we just yeah, I forgot, I forgot to mention, before we move on to Brian introducing just to the attendees, uh, we have a, a Q&A section. So feel free to go and type your um, questions in the Q&A window and we'll either answer them live or we'll type our answers as we go, we'll get to them all as um, as we can. Um, so think of your questions as we're talking and type them and we'll answer them in, in due course. Go ahead, Brian. Hi there, my name is uh, Brian or Professor Fote. Um, I'm in the music department and as Jamie said, I'll be uh, teaching the introduction to media studies course in the winter. Um, most of my courses sort of fall within uh, popular music and media studies in music. Um, I also teach uh, the big intro to, to popular music class, as well as issues in popular music studies, which is one of the electives offered uh, to, to media studies students as well. Um, I've been here for about five years now and, and actually did my undergrad in, in a media studies department too at Western. Um, so I have some friends who have kind of ventured off and, and not become professors, but, but found employment in, in different areas of um, the media sector, the creative sector. So I may be able to help answer some questions related to that as well. Um, but that's all I'll say for now and, and come back in the Q&A. Thank um, Hi, I'm Mike Litwack. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of English and Film Studies, although uh, my background is actually in media studies. So I'm really thrilled to have the opportunity to be teaching in the new BA program. Um, in the winter, I'll be teaching Media Studies 200. Um, in English, I teach a variety of courses in cultural studies and cultural theory, African American literature, and critical race studies. Um, again, I'm really excited to be here and to chat with you about the new major and any kind of questions you might have. So we have no questions yet. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, my role as advisor is um, to uh, help serve students who are media studies majors or who are interested in, in declaring the major. Um, so many of you who are joining us now are either majors or you're undeclared, you're still sort of shopping around for a major and that's fine. Um, it's great that you're attending these sessions and seeing who's who and hearing a little bit about the programs. And um, uh, I'm just saying, also gonna say by way of welcoming you to your post-secondary studies here at U of A is, um, you know, take some time to figure out what interests you. If, you, if you're not sure what your, what your stream is right now, take some options, uh, follow your interests. If, if your program is not working for you and you chose a major that you really feel as you get into it, it's a bit of a not a good fit, you know, change it. There's make friends with your advisor on campus, talk to some professors and, and get some mentorship from them and follow something, something that's really going to resonate with you. There's so many options in the, in the Faculty of Arts. You don't even know what's out there. There's some amazing courses and, you know, just follow and take some options. Then you never know what door that's going to open for you. 
And uh, like I say, if you need to switch your program or change something, see your advisor, we're here to help you and we can direct you to where to go. Um, we still have no questions, so I would like to ask one of the professors if they wouldn't mind talking about the idea of interdisciplinary studies and what is interdisciplinary studies and why is media studies interdisciplinary? I guess I can take that one. Um, so, um, well, first of all, I just want to tell you that um, media studies is a brand new program, brand new major um, here at the University of Alberta. Um, and one nice thing about having a, a new major is that we can kind of draw on all of the resources of the university, of the Faculty of Arts, and bring different people together to build something new. Um, so that's really the idea beh um, behind interdisciplinarity. I mean, media studies comes out of a lot of different um, sort of established traditions of, of scholarship. Um, so, you know, we have film studies, um, that's where I'm from. We have English, um, or Professor Litwack is from music, for, uh, uh, Professor Foto is from, but also, um, you know, we have professors in sociology and anthropology and uh, political science and all, all different departments within the Faculty of Arts who are doing work related to media. Um, so, you know, media studies isn't one thing. There's a lot of different methodologies that can be used in relation to the study of media. Um, so one nice thing about media studies is, although we have core courses that you have to take, just a few of them, not very many, I think six, um, then you can also take uh, elective courses in a lot of different departments. Um, so that gives you a chance to kind of, you know, check out a bunch of different other programs as well. You know, you might decide, oh, okay, I want to go do sociology instead. That's also fine. Um, but, you know, you get a kind of a taste of, um, of different ways of thinking um, that are all surrounded or are all pointed at the same object, which is media. Yeah, and I would even add to that, um, Professor Barron, that, you know, because media are at once art and entertainment, social practices, cultural forms, economic industries and technologies, it really requires an interdisciplinary framework to study media. Um, so one of the exciting things about this new program is that we're drawing upon resources throughout the Faculty of Arts in order to study the various dimensions of um, media culture today and historically as well. We do have a question now. Yeah, we got a couple. We have, we have a quite few? a few actually. Oh. All right. Um, all right. Well, maybe I'll, shall I read out a, a question? I'll sure. start with the one at the top. Um, okay. So the first question we have is what kind of student engagement opportunities will be available, community activities, engagement with faculty, et cetera. Um, who wants to take that one? Well, one thing I know that um, like Jamie and I have talked a little bit about um, as we've thought about the intro class, at least is, is trying to set up some, um, guest speakers or um, you know field trips when when that's available um, to different organizations in town whether it's something like the Garneau Theatre or the campus radio station here um, or CKUA downtown so thinking about ways of connecting what you're studying to what's happening here in the city of, of Edmonton um, we're at the moment a fairly small group of faculty members who will be available as this um, program degree program gets going so regular engagement with faculty through things like office hours and discussions and I think that I'm excited to think about these uh, these sorts of opportunities and how we might develop things as this program um, gets going and and maybe do regular um, you know showcases of student work potentially um, you know different coffee houses potentially reading groups things like that that we might get going um, all, all of this is 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 new to us and new to you and and I look forward to hearing what um, the other panelists might have to say on that topic too yeah I'll second the um, the idea of bringing in um, different people from the community into our courses um, obviously right now that would be through zoom or something like that but you know in the future hopefully also in person and um, there are, you know, community service learning components that we're, uh, we're still figuring out, right, because it's a new program. Um, but some of it's also going to depend on student interests, right? Um, we want to hear what you're interested in, and then we can kind of pursue those kinds of connections within the community. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would add there. Mike, did you want to say anything? Yeah, about I mean, I would just add that I think that um, from our conversations, one of the... Um, one of our commitments is really to thinking between theory and practice in a variety of registers. Um, so for example, 
Um, I'll be teaching Media Studies 200 in the winter, which is um, in a genealogy of uh, conceptual frameworks and theoretical frameworks for the study of media. However, at the same time, in addition to reading various um, theories, various texts, we're also going to be looking at a lot of media. So really thinking about the ways in which various kinds of media practices across film, television, photography, recorded sound, print, and digital media um, have intersected with, pressured, helped us rethink various kinds of critical frameworks and traditions. So I think that one of our commitments um, and one, things that, one of the things that students will constantly be, hopefully be getting out of this program will be um, that balance between theory and practice. Um, yeah, and there's things on campus already that you might, if you're interested in media, um, you might find yourself involved with the, the Gateway, the student paper here, um, which has online writing as well as a monthly uh, print magazine with, with art and photography. Um, so there's opportunities for writing, for photography, um, for digital art and, and print and different artistic uh, media. And, and I mentioned before the campus radio station, um, a lot of students get involved in that and, and sort of develop um, radio shows or, or learn the skills to to start kicking off a podcast or something like that. Um, so there's various resources on campus already that um, I think would pair quite well with this degree program. Mm -hmm. There's also a student film club as well. I don't know what they're doing right now, but um, they've hosted screenings in the past and had filmmakers come in and um, have also made films together. So there's, there's that kind of activity as well. Um, maybe we should jump to the next question. Um, what is related. So what are some of the assignments and projects that are a part of the program? Um, I'll answer that first, um, because again, we're still developing this, but um, so I've, I've been working on the syllabus for, um, you know, the, the intro course. And um, so the way that we have thought about this program is that it's still very important to us that you develop your writing skills, right? So there will be papers, there will certainly be an emphasis on developing critical writing skills, critical reading, critical writing. Um, but there will also be options to do um, other kinds of creative projects. Um, so certainly video, podcasts, um, I mean, really anything you can think of uh, will certainly be a possibility. Um, so it really depends on what kinds of media you're interested in producing, right? Um, if you're interested in making videos, you will have that opportunity. Um, it will come usually coupled with a writing assignment um, so that writing is not lost. Um, so you know, writing will always be a part of, uh, of the major. But um, as you move through the program, you can choose to focus on a particular kind of production practice if you want to you know really develop certain skills um, i mean we're not a production program right we don't have any courses in um you know specifically producing video right we don't have a video production course but um if that's something you're interested in by the end um the the final sort of capstone course of the of the major is a portfolio class where you will really develop a major project um, and it can be in whatever medium you choose. It'll be theoretically and historically informed and you'll work closely with a faculty member in developing it, um, but you can really choose uh, what kind of, of work you want it to be. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in terms of assignment. Um, again, writing will always be a part of it and I can't escape that, but, um, <laughs> but certainly other, other um, media as well. Did you wanna to add to that, Brian or Mike? No, I think because I'm doing the winter version, Jamie and I will try to keep some consistency there. But um, in all the classes I teach, I usually do have some options as well for final paper projects, whether it's audio or video. Um, so I imagine in the various courses you might be taking as electives or within the, the core six, um, you will have those outlets and opportunities too. Um, so that focus on, on writing, but also thinking about how the ideas you're expressing through writing might also come through um, different outlets too. Yeah. Um, so again, I'll be teaching media studies 200 for the first time in the winter. Um, but certainly some of the assignments will provide opportunities for you to take some of the frameworks, some of the key terms and concepts which we develop and think together with um, across the semester and utilize those to make sense of a variety of media practices, forms, and objects that most interest you in the world around you. Um, so uh, there will certainly be opportunities um, for you to look at what you are interested in within the frameworks that we develop together. Um, so again, across a variety of media forms and practices. I hope that, I hope that answers uh, Kyle's question. 
because Kyle was asking, can giving an overview of what MST 200 will be will be like. So, um, okay. Well, d uh, did you want me to respond? I guess it's more about 200 because uh, yeah. well, maybe I should describe the. Um, because Kyle, I, I know he's in my, my course, so he's seen my syllabus, or at least parts of it. I'm still <laughs> putting some of it up, but um, maybe I should speak to that first, and then Mike can talk about 200. I think you meant yeah, 100, because there's another comment below that said Prop Baron syllabus for 100. Oh, OK. Did you add that? No. Nope. Oh, no, OK. OK, I see that now. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly say what uh, Media Studies 100 is, and then Mike can talk about 200. Um, so Media Studies 100 is a broad overview, right? We're starting with language as a, as a media technology, um, language itself. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about homing pigeons. I mean, we're going we're gonna to go way back. Um, cuneiform, things like that. But, uh, but we're going to spend basically a week on um, kind of more or less one major media form. So we're going to look at radio, we're going to look at film, we're going to look at, um, you know, recorded sound, um, what other things, uh, tel telephone and telegraphy, things like that, right? So we're going to be, and I mean, we'll go up to the present, we'll be looking at the computer, the internet, video games, um, but it's a very broad overview of, of media history, different media forms, um, to just kind of give you a sense of both the historical trajectory of, of media technologies, um, but also some of the, the theoretical grounding. Um, but I think you'll, you'll get more of the kind of theoretical and cultural um, issues will we'll get more developed um, as you move through the program, right? So the, the 100 level course is the foundation. Um, and then um, the 200 level courses get a little bit more focused. Um, so yeah, Mike, do you want to talk about what you're thinking for 200? I know you're still working on it. Um, so yeah, so I'll, uh, why don't I preface my comments by saying that one of the exciting things about um, being a part of a new program, both from, I think from the perspectives of both instructors and students as well, um, is that um, Jamie, Brian, myself and others are able to really form a curriculum that builds upon one another. So a lot of those skills that you'll be getting um, in Media Studies 100, you'll certainly see conversations developed and um, in Media Studies 200 that build upon those conversations. So most broadly, Media Studies 200 um, seeks to provide you with a variety of critical frameworks that have been central across the humanities, um, from English to film to art history to communications, that have been really central to thinking about what media are and what media do. Um, so I'd say that there's sort of a two-pronged approach to this course. On the one hand, we're going to be um, building a set of conceptual languages to think about specific media as forms. So in other words, what do we need to think about a newspaper as a newspaper? And how is, it, how is reading a newspaper different from reading a web page, for example? Right. Um, so again, thinking about what's sometimes called medium specificity, right? What are specific to different media forms as forms. At the same time, we're going to be surveying a really vast range of theoretical approaches that you can mobilize to understand the media cultures that surround you in the world. Um, so again, um, not to overwhelm you, but we'll be looking at frameworks like semiotics, psychoanalysis, feminist and queer theory, um, historical materialism, and a variety of other approaches that can help you make sense of uh, the media culture that you're constantly engaged with. So that would be thinking about media as at once aesthetic, cultural, social, political, technological, and eco economic forms. Uh, that was a lot, but I promise it will all make a lot of sense once we're not maybe not together, but at least together in a Zoom room. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm very intimidated by that. That sounds intimidating to me, and I, I even know what those the terms mean. <laughs> but yes, the the 100 level will be the stepping stone to that. Um, those other concepts. I'm very curious to hear the answer to this question. What is the difference between media studies and film studies? I will take that one. Okay, because I'm in the film studies program as well. Um, yeah, so there are two different majors, right? There's a media studies major, which is brand new, and there's a film studies major. Um, so you can choose to major in either one. 
But the nice thing about media studies is that you can take film studies courses that will count towards a media studies major, right? Um, because media studies is broader than just film studies. Um, so you can, you know, you would take other things as well as film. Um, but if you're interested in film, but you don't want to major in it necessarily, um, you can take pretty much any film studies course um, we are likely to approve as part of media studies. Um, the one thing you do have to do to take film studies courses is you have to take um, Film Studies 100, which is just the intro, intro course. And then once you've taken that, you can take any of the film studies courses. So you do have to take one other 100 level course in order to take those other courses. Um, but that's, it's a good course. I teach that one often um, as well. And uh, you know that really teaches you certain skills that you need for analyzing film. Um, but in the film studies program, I mean, you can go look at the, um, the course page. Uh, I mean, we have all kinds of courses in film. Um, it ranges from me. I teach, I'll just tell you what some of the things I teach. I teach uh, screening comedy, which is about film comedy, um, uh, screening race, issues of race in film, uh, contemporary Hollywood, documentary, uh, East Asian cinema. I teach a course on remix, uh, which is actually in some ways more of a media studies course already, um, but it's in the film studies program. Um, but there's also other courses in Canadian cinema and uh, French New Wave and all kinds of things like that. But that will count uh, towards the media studies major. Horror as well, right? Oh yeah, there's a horror yeah. class, there's a gangster film class, a Western class. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, not everything gets taught every year, so you have to see what is being offered each year. Um, it's a small faculty, so, you know, we, we can't offer all the courses all the time, but there's a lot of good stuff. Um, I would like to answer that question that somebody asked about, um, are there plans to develop a student association or student group? Um, there is no plans for that particularly, but our unit is very supportive of student groups. And in some of our other programs, for instance, our graduate um, uh, program in digital humanities, they have an extremely active and vibrant student group. And we also have a communications person uh, who is also a student who can help any students who want to start one. And there is a good process, well-supported process through the Student Union uh, Center for that. And we encourage it and we'll do everything as a, de as a department to support you. And um, yeah, go for it. Especially if you're a first year student and you're asking this question, this is great because as soon as you um, spend a lot of time in your program connecting with your cohorts and getting, uh, finding out what's going on in your discipline and, and, and becoming engaged in those activities, uh, you know, social activities and open, you know, networking and scholarship, you're really on the right path. So no plans for it, but please someone do it. We will do everything we, we can to help and it's a, it'll be a big community. And um, yeah, I also wanted to mention that one of the things that recently opened in our um, at the university is the Digital Scholarship Center. So for those that are interested in digital media and digital forms, there's a whole network of brand new shiny uh, place where you can indulge that, um, that work. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, there's a question here about concentrating in a general area of study, like world lit international relations. Does this apply to media studies? Um, no, we don't. We don't have that. There is a, there is that in in some other programs. Our this program is strictly a major, a major in media studies, and there is not a minor at this time. So you could minor in something in another department, like if you want to do a minor in political studies or, or something like that. But if you want to be involved in in media studies, you either major in it or you can just take some of the classes. So if you're an undeclared major and you're not sure, um, try some of the classes. The only thing is, is that the MSP 100 is very popular and it is full for both semesters. So if you want to take it, you um, don't need a prerequisite and you can register, but you'd have to put yourself on the watch list uh, for bear tracks to get in. Um, and hopefully we will have some more flexibility in future years or future semesters that we can offer more sections of those classes if they prove to be popular with this being the first year we weren't sure what the demand would be so uh, the demand is good so definitely if you're not going to major in our program you can also take a media studies class that's okay is it true that it's still flexible for double majors as well and in, in terms of like how many core courses we need and other departments that may have minimal requirements for a major 
Yes, with the recent changes in the PAT in two years ago with the recent changes in the general BA requirements, it made it easier um, in terms of flexibility for students to get a double major because having a minor is no longer um, required. So you can have a double major or you can have double minor or one major or minor or just a major and uh, take whatever you want that way. And because in media studies, um, in addition to, you know, these few core courses that Professor Barron has talked about, um, we really are drawing upon cross-listed courses, resources from across the university. Um, in some ways, the media studies BA pairs really nicely with a variety of double majors and minors. It's sort of somewhat easier because we are drawing upon um, so many other courses from across the faculty. You could almost like have a concentration based on what your degree yeah. will be in the end. It could be, you know, political science and media studies, film and media studies, English and media studies, music and media studies, depending on those home departments and whether or not they, they allow that. Totally. Um, there's a question about accommodations for um, students with auditor auditory processing issues. Um, so for Media Studies 100, I am, I'm working on that. Um, you know, in the classroom, I knew how to um, cope with those things, figuring out like subtitle files. And uh, uh, I'm trying to make sure that everything has subtitles. Um, but I, I, I certainly would love it if, if on your end, you are not finding the subtitles that I thought I put on or something like that, please let me know. Um, I am trying to make everything as accessible as possible, but, you know, working in this online format, this is new to me. Um, so it's possible that, you know, I may have missed something, let me know and I will try to fix it. And I think that's true for everyone um, who's working on this sort of, you know, new remote situation. Yeah. And, um, I, can I just say that um, I, um, in the the university in the, on a, a more broader way has some accessibility services for you that I can help you um, if you want to approach me separately or email me I can uh, um, I can point you in the direction of those services to get you know more uh, advanced support if you're needed for your situation yeah um, no all, all of us are extraordinarily committed to accessibility you know, as we work to move our courses online, obviously new challenges present themselves. But um, if, if you feel comfortable, I would say, if you're not getting something that you need to succeed in one of our courses, get in touch with us. And we'll be absolutely thrilled to do whatever we can to make sure that every single student succeeds in our courses. That's a, that's a commitment that we have as a program to you. Um, especially during these times that are not easy for any of us. Absolutely. And there's also a question here about um, opportunities. If you graduate as a media studies major, but also fluency in language. Um, those are sort of two questions. I guess one is opportunities as a media studies student. Um, so I guess I would say that there are a lot of opportunities um, that I think come out of being a media studies major. Um, you know, there are so many jobs now that require media savvy skills. Um, and although we're not teaching production skills, you know, having a really good sense of how media work um, is, is gonna be very useful um, in, you know, many of the emerging job fields. Um, so that's certainly part of it. Um, the other part of it is that this is a, I mean, it's a liberal arts major. It is, um, you know, really about critical thinking, um, which is a skill that applies to all sort of higher level jobs. Um, and, you know, the, any kind of career that you want, um, you know, like a, a good career <laughs> um, is going to require those critical writing, critical thinking, critical reading, critical understanding um, skills. And so, you know, employers are looking for, um, you know, people who have those, whether often referred to as soft skills, although I don't, I feel like that's a kind of a misnomer, um, but skills that apply to many different scenarios. Um, so that is certainly one thing. Another thing is, you know, obviously this would prepare you um, to go on to a higher degree, right? Um, if you decide you want to go to graduate school of some kind, um, this is, is the kind of major that really prepares you um, for further education. Um, so, you know, 
I mean, I, I certainly know people who have gone from, I mean, this is a new major, but, you know, from film studies, um, you know, they might get a law degree or they might go into graduate school in, you know, a variety of fields or, or business school. I mean, really anything um, This really gives you those kind of critical skills that can be applied to any future career um, outside of perhaps the sciences, you know, it's a different, different realm, but yeah. That answer um, that Dr. Barron just gave flows into also the uh, next question we have, which is about internships that would be available. And um, so I would direct you to uh, the service we have in the Faculty of Arts, which is amazing. And they're called Arts Work Experience. And they are a very professional service that uh, also coordinates with the Career Center, which is the Central University Career um, Service. And we find, they find internships and work co-ops and work exchanges for arts students while you're doing your degree. And many of them are paid. Some of them are uh, on your, you appear on your transcript as work experience. So that is sort of a very highly specialized function. It's, and it's handled by this group that does amazing work for faculty of arts students. So. I would encourage any student, I, as, although we can't speak to exactly what internships they've set up, they've got that covered. So any student coming in needs to see them at one point in their, in their uh, program and see what they have to offer because there's some amazing opportunities um, of, of things you can do while you're studying and putting your degree to use and being able to see what the, what the landscape looks like for jobs once you finish and even during your studies. So that's a great service for, for our faculty. Mm -hmm. That looks like all the questions for now. Are there other? Yeah, we've, yeah, we've got a little less than 10 minutes or about 10 minutes left. We would happy to take more questions. Okay, if there's no questions, I would. I wanted to ask, um, starting with, say, Brian, what is your favorite thing to, t to teach in your class? That's a great question. I think since I haven't taught MST 100 yet, like, I can't speak to that one. Um, but in my issues in popular music, music studies class, I really like to look at our assumptions around um, streaming music services and kind of taken for granted assumptions that you know everything's available on them or that um, you know they're they're a sustainable or equitable system for for artists and and users and taking a closer look at things like the the way algorithms work or um, you know the the prevalence of a handful of, of kind of um, top selling artists um, to the kind of detriment of of a more uh, diverse array of, of genres, styles, uh, different types of artists. Um, so really getting students to think about the services they're using, how they're listening to music, um, the way that you know, recommendations and algorithms work and, and what we might not be hearing um, as we sort of just jump on board these new services that, that mm -hmm. come around. Um, and thinking about what other uh, avenues might be out there to, to listen to different things that maybe we're not hearing on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about you, Michael? What's your favorite part of your course that you like to teach? Oh, that's a, um, it's a hard one, isn't it? Uh, so one thing that, again, this is anticipatory because I haven't taught Media Studies 200 before, but one thing that one topic will take up, for example, um, is both the possibilities and the perils of um, social media for producing certain kinds of social change. And here I'm thinking um, specifically about viral videos um, of images of police violence, which have been in the news constantly recently, oh, wow. um, which are sort of promised to mobilize us into action. Um, so we'll be, so one thing um, I will be interested in thinking with you all about, if, if of course you enroll in this course, mm -hmm. is um, to what extent can an image produce change? To what extent can an image mobilize us into action? Um, and how, or how might an image lull us in certain kinds of ways, such that we become numb to um, forms of violence and violation? Or how can an image bring us together? 
Um, so something that seems like a really simple question like that, um, about the power of an image, we're going to find is really, really complicated. And we'll look at some pretty cool art that helps us think through these questions together. Interesting. Okay. What do you think, Jamie? Um, hmm, that's, a, that's a tough one. I guess um, I'll pick some of kind of a big, a big overarching thing that I like to pose the question of, and I think it's going to be central to uh, the intro course this fall, is really just how different media technologies transform our perception of the world, right? I mean, at this point, we see the world, we hear the world, we, um, to some extent, maybe even almost touch the world, right, through media technologies. Um, and, you know, there, there's various people who've already discussed how at this point we're uh, kind of like cyborgs, right, that we're kind of post-human because we have all these technologies that we're constantly, um, you know, in touch with and, and working through. And um, so, I mean, I really like just posing that question of, you know, how has a technology changed us, right? I mean, we use our technologies, but our technologies also affect us very deeply. Um, so, you know, sort of where, where are we now um, when we are so um, enmeshed in, in our technologies? Um, but also looking at that historically, right? How has that happened? How have, you know, at every, sort of tech moment of technological change, um, people's experience of the world has really shifted and sort of how can we understand our own moment better um, through looking at previous moments of change. I wanted to draw your attention to the course, um, which I thought was on our, oh yes, STS 350, which is offered by uh, our, our unit, which is Understanding Video Games. It's a very good uh, course that's available in both the, an online format and, uh, well, it's, everything's online now, but mm -hmm. um, a, a really good course that is, um, that studies uh, gender in video games um, and, and video game design and how it's informed by um, society and, and media. And uh, that is a very popular course, one of our hot courses, what I would say. Um, uh, so look, take, take a look at that if you're looking for a course to take. We've got five minutes left. Are there any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> yeah, or if anyone has any, no. like some of those questions earlier about what sort of student opportunities or community building, you know, things within the degree or, or sorts of assignments, if anyone you know, has a wish list, now's your chance to yeah. influence, to influence this uh, degree program. That is one of the cool things about being part of a new program, right? There's many opportunities to, um, to change it, to influence it. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're open at this point. <laughs> Um, there's a number of good webinars that are being offered this week. I, I'm really happy that we've got such good attendance on ours on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. um, but there's many good uh, webinars and you will have, uh, as art students, you will have received um, uh, emails, uh, uh, newsletters saying when all the slots are. There's a lot of general information, especially about advising on the arts faculty and where you have to go to for some things. So uh, be sure to attend some if you can and, and see the faces and get to know us and see where you where you need to go to navigate your program. Will there be more practical exposure? I'm not sure if I understand the intent of that question. Can you elaborate on it? Like exposure for practical um, tools or practical practices in the program? Is that what you mean? because I know that has sort of come up. If you're interested in any of the courses and seeing what the actual content is, especially the MST, M MST ones, I can, we can share the syllabus as well. If you email the program and you say, I'd like to see the syllabus for that course, we can definitely send it to you. And at, at some point it'll be linked to our website. But. So more field study, more of community work. Mm. Jamie, what would you say to that? Um, I mean, I think, again, uh, talking to the, you know, community service learning, um, we're going to be working with them um, to, you know, sort of develop opportunities within the community. Um, and then the 
arts, what, what's the arts work? What's Art, it called? Arts, work, arts work experience. Yeah. yeah arts work experience. Right. I mean, so if this is something that we're, we're working on, um, you know, and it's uh, the pandemic has certainly put a bit of a, a stopper on, um, on that development. So that's something that's still um, in progress, but it's certainly something that we will be working through. So again, I think it still depends on students' interests, right? Um, if students are interested in a particular field, then we can make connections within the community. Um, so yeah, that's something that we will continue to, to develop. And I think one of the, if I'm not mistaken, 300 level courses that hasn't, isn't offered yet, um, but I think it, it works to sort of make connections to a, a variety of industries, media industries. Um, so you may have representatives from these companies or, or groups or organizations um, who you know become a point of contact for you if that's the sort of thing you want to get into. You can follow up with them. You never know what sort of opportunities they might have. Um, and even thinking about the final project you do for the degree, um, that could also become something that helps you, um, you know, showcase that experience that you have or um, use that as an outlet for the, the sort of practical work you hope to do. Um, and as more courses become developed, I'm sure, as Jamie said, if there's an interest in, in this or that, these are the sorts of things we can um, you know, tailor curriculum and courses to. And yeah. we know yeah. that that's popular. Sorry. We know that that's a concern of students too and the Faculty of Arts is creating a, a new thing. Like Jamie mentioned community service learning and the arts work experience is a new, there's a new called an experiential learning hub that's in development right now to access students, mm -hmm. for students to access. Go ahead, sorry, Michael. I was just going to say, yeah, so, you know, the two courses, or rather the three courses that are being offered next year, Media Studies 100, 200, and 210, um, are really foundations courses in Media Studies, giving you a kind of language um, or, yeah, producing a kind of language for us to think critically and speak critically and write critically about a variety of forms. However, um, some of the other courses that will be offered the following year, for example, at the 300 and 400 level, are really thinking um, and about media as businesses, as enterprises, also as in independent organizations as well. So a variety of the kinds of institutions in which you might engage media professionally, critically, politically, so on and so on. Um, so, but I think, so th I think that's really going to come to the fore um, in those upper level courses, right? Building upon those critical languages that we develop together next year. Yeah, and like the media portfolio course, um, I think is going to be really important in that, right? Because, you know, once you've taken the courses, you have your foundation, I mean, that's when you can really produce something really good, right? And whatever format that's going to be in, um, you know, you, you'll be thinking about, you know, how you can use that course to actually have a portfolio that you can show. I mean, probably you won't necessarily be in your hands, um, but it might be, right? Something that you can actually submit, you know, whether it's for publication or, you know, for, for a job, right? Um, you know, you used to have a a film reel, now it's probably just a, you know, a digital file, but right, you would have something where you could actually, um, you know, submit that to an employer and say, here's what I can do. Um, so, you know, you, you would have some materials that you could um, make public in, in various ways. There's one question here about software, um, and then I guess we have to wrap up because we were told we had to be done at 1145. At this point, there's no software you specifically need. Um, uh, Basically, if you have the software and you have the skills, you can make use of it. Um, and so we're not going to be teaching any software skills. So they are things that you're going to have to acquire yourself if you want to do them. Um, but uh, there will always be options, right? So, you know, if, if the assignment is to make a video and for some reason somebody can't shoot video, you can do a drawing, right? I mean, we'll, we'll find other ways of working around um, any kind of technical limitations, um, particularly, you know, given the um, situation right now, um, you know, it's, it's important to have some kind of internet access, but, <laughs> you know, as long as you can access the materials online, um, you know, you should be able to complete the assignments regardless of what kind of software you have on your computer. So that is us. That is it for our time. In the chat box, if you want to just double check the next panels that are coming up, there is um, uh, uh, um, our, our wonderful IST assistant has posted the next uh, 
uh, the information on next panels coming up, there's an accessibility services uh, for more um, information on closed captioning. Um, if you want to email me at mediatech at U of A, uh, Alberta Arts, I can give you the, the exact web page for that or the direct you to that. And at 3 p.m., there's an all student panel on experiential learning uh, today. So you can join that. Look in your newsletter for other highlights coming up. Again, our, my email that gets to me is at the media tech at UAlberta or one, any one of the instructors who's happy to take questions if it's about course specific. Um, thanks very much for attending our panelists and our students. We look forward to seeing you and good luck in your programs and your post-secondary career. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.